All right, everybody, welcome back to another how to slash troubleshooting video. So a number of you have come to me with questions of late about native VLANs, and apparently it's a popular question on job interviews. So I thought I would go in and lab it up. So without further ado, here's how native VLANs work. So here is our base topology, and many of you may remember that VLAN 1 is sometimes called the management VLAN, but what what we don't often talk about, or maybe we don't talk about enough, is the fact that the management VLAN is also what we call the native VLAN, and we'll cover that here in a second. So what we got is a pair of switches, and they are connected to each other, and one of them is routing. So I've got a pair of other VLANs, so we got VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 here, and we got a, a management node there watching the trunk line between them. So two networks, two VLANs, two switches, and then a couple of PCs on a third network that is the management network, and these are our management nodes. Both of those are connected to VLAN 1, which of course is our management VLAN. So what does it mean to be a management VLAN or a native VLAN? Well, it's quite simple. It means that your tags, when they're going across the trunk, are not, or I'm sorry, your frames, when they're going across the trunk, are not tagged. And so what does this do for us? Well, when we start trunking, when we create VLANs, that puts up boundaries for traffic. And so if your management network was actually in a tagged VLANs, it means that you would have boundaries that you would have to cross. It would be more difficult to get to your management interfaces. And so we create a management network that has, among other things, untagged traffic. So it can get farther, and so that we all know where our untagged traffic is going, we call that the management or the uh, the native VLAN. And here's proof. So if you take a look at the traffic running between the two nodes on the tagged VLANs, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, we can see in the top circle here that I've got an 802.1Q tagged frame, meaning that when the source address tables are processed, the VLAN information is included in the frame. And this is true no matter what direction the traffic is flowing. But on the bottom, you can see the IP addresses that I've used there, 1.1 and 1.2, these are on the management network. And this traffic is untagged. Remember that I was capturing traffic on the trunk between the two switches, okay? So these two things were happening at the exact same time, but one set of traffic was tagged and the other one was not. So the big question here is what happens when we screw around with this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply modify the VLAN characteristics of one side of this topology. And what this does is create our native VLAN mismatch between the two frames. So on switch number two there, the bottom one, I'm going to take and tell the switch that the native VLAN is going to be VLAN 30. Remember that 10 and 20 are my other two tagged VLANs. So that's the only change I'm going to make. So here's the command I issued. So it's a very straightforward thing, although we don't do it very often. Everybody a lot of times defaults to VLAN 1. So I changed the native VLAN or the untagged VLAN on one of the switches to VLAN 30. And what happens? Well, immediately the management ping dies and then it comes back as the switches are figuring it out. So there's some traffic that goes back and forth and the two switches are talking to each other via CDP, and suddenly the management nodes cannot talk to each other at all. But the traffic on the tagged VLANs still flows. So this is a problem with the untagged or native VLANs, not the data VLANs. So here's the error that we get. We get the, if you take a look at the arrow, that shows us the command that we get on the console, the native VLAN mismatch. And so remember that on one switch, we've got a native VLAN of one, and the other one, we've got a native VLAN of 30. And so what the switch does in response, I should say what the switches do in response, is they say, wait a minute, something's wrong with your VLAN topology, and we're going to throw a shoe here. We are going to block not only the original native VLAN, but also VLAN 30. So both of these VLANs are going to be blocked, or at least the port for traffic in that particular VLAN is going to be blocked. 
Well, we know the output in the CLI uh, said that they were going to be blocked, but here's a little more proof for us. This is the output of show span, and we can see that on the top, in the circle there, we've got VLAN 1 information, and we can see that port 24, which is the port that I used to connect the two switches, that particular port is blocked. And then if we go down a little bit, we see that in VLAN 10, which is one of the data VLANs, that port is not blocked. Now we see this kind of behavior all the time. VLANs can have separate logical topologies. They do not have to share the same logical topology, even though they share the same physical network. But in this case, the reason that this happened is because we had that native VLAN mismatch. All right, so what happens if we push this a little farther? I know, let's, let's do this. Let's see what happens if we take the management node on the other, v, on the other switch and put it in VLAN 30, but we don't tell the switch that VLAN 30 is the native VLAN. So if we'd have done VLAN 30 as the native VLAN on both switches, that solves the problem. And that's actually sometimes a good thing to do, move off of VLAN 1, because everybody knows that VLAN 1 is the native management VLAN. So it's very common to see folks use another network and another native VLAN other than VLAN 1. But in this case, what we've got now is that the bottom switch thinks that VLAN 30 is the native VLAN, and the top switch thinks that VLAN 30 is a tagged VLAN. Now, if we sit there and we chalkboard this out, we might say, well... It'll tag it going across. The bottom switch will remove the tag and then, and then send it on to VLAN 30. But that's not, in fact, what happens. What the switch does now is it says, well, look, I still have my native VLAN mismatch. One switch thinks it's VLAN 1. One switch thinks it's VLAN 30. And so I've blocked both. So it doesn't matter what you do with the VLANs. If you're using the same numbers where you have the mismatch, the traffic is going to be shut down, and so it still doesn't work. And so that's an important thing to remember. Your VLAN mismatches affect not only the native VLAN, but any other VLAN that uses that particular ID. So what's our lesson here? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Stay away from VLAN mismatches. And as important as data VLANs, your native VLAN mismatch can create real problems for you. Whenever you think about VLAN architecture, there's a, a lot of things that we have to take into account. Commonalities, where is traffic going, who is talking to who, where your applications, where your resources are, security concerns, quality of service concerns. So you got to think about that stuff before you just start deploying VLANs and VLAN tags willy-nilly. What I like to do when I decide what my VLANs are going to be is I try to make my life a little easier by combining the IDs across all of the configuration parameters that I can. So for example, if I'm using sub-interfaces and we're dealing with VLAN 30, I'll name my sub-interfaces 1.30 or 0.0 or 0 slash 0 0.30. My subnet that's going to be on that VLAN, will I'll try to match it up with a 30. And then, of course, the VLAN will be 30. And that way it makes it really easy when you're looking at your configurations to understand what part of the network you're looking at and where, how far that part of the, the architecture can extend. Well, that'll about do it for a discussion on native VLAN mismatch. I hope this helps you. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for listening. You can go to BruceHartPence.com for updates. I try to keep that updated as much as possible. Thanks again, and may your packets always reach their destinations.